God willing, I walk away from the stage undisputed as the five-time champ. But whatever outcome I know is God's plan and a purpose behind it. Jaren Buendia, I have to be pro, 23 years old. I'm out of Sacramento, California. In the title of 2014, Men Physique Olympia champion, Jaren Buendia! It's all I've been dreaming of, man, for ever since I can remember. Jeremy, we're I visualized this, man. I visualized this, and I put a lot of prayer into this in the last few weeks, man. And I came here with a goal, man. It was a, it was a goal and it was a, it was a mission. You know, you know that nobody, that nobody outworks me. Four-time Olympia champion. Gentlemen, thank you very much. This concludes pre judging. I announced my retirement before my last Olympia. I was the four time champ, and you know, I had all the sponsors in the world. You know, everybody was watching what I was doing and I was making a lot of money. And, you know, I put my late teens and all of my 20s into bodybuilding and, you know, I felt a little burnt out on it. I have gained so much from winning and social media followings. And I've, you know, things were just, seemed to all be rolling in in my direction. I felt invincible, I felt unstoppable. Things were just happening. You know, I remember just waking up and just getting like financial reports from my team every morning, just like feeling unstoppable. 2017 Olympia is officially over. The war is over. And we came out on top, just as I said. And um, if you guys know me by now, if I say I'm going to do something, you guys know I do it. And uh, I expect the same from you guys. So always be a man of your word. You know, that your word is everything and take pride in everything you do. Coming off that pec surgery, I didn't expect to compete. So, you know, I started to focus a lot on having fun and just in trying to enjoy my life, I guess you want to say, more so just party. You know, I, I didn't do much partying in my late teens and early 20s when I was building my career up and when I was a, a champion. So I wanted to flex on everybody. I just wanted to live a rock star lifestyle, to be honest. And, you know, 2018, you know, I was single. You know, I, I was traveling around the world. Probably every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I go out, drop a couple grand every night we were out. I would have everybody come out and I would take care of the town. I would take care of everything. I just kind of got sucked into this, this party scene, this lifestyle where we're drinking a lot, you know, doing party drugs on the weekend. And, you know, I just kind of just like got sucked into something that, you know, ultimately doing that stuff on, you know, every weekend is just going to eat at you. The things that satisfied me, you know, were very superficial things. Spending money like crazy on things that, you know, didn't really matter. You know, I'd fly girls out, I'd buy girls like Louis Vuitton bags like on the second date and stupid shit like that. I was living in like a penthouse and stuff in Huntington Beach. I was just blowing money on superficial things. I wasn't being smart. You know, I could have taken that money and invested it and done different things in the long, in the long run, but I was just really dumb living for the now. And I thought doing all those things would gain, you know, gain me more popularity on social media, which in turn would be you know, return more money in my businesses and whatnot. So everything I was thinking about, all this money I'm dumping into all these things is gonna make me bigger or more popular, which in turn will generate more revenue. That was a thought process. But if you're a shithead and you're, you're, you're having like, I was a shithead, you know, like people didn't like me. I, was, I would go off and talk shit on people on social media. I would start beef with people. I would just ruffle everybody's feathers and you know, people ended up not liking me because of, how arrogant I had become. It sucks because I look back on some of the, like, the old videos I have on my phone or seeing how I was acting. It's like super, it's just super embarrassing now that I've grown up and realized what's you know, right from wrong. Hair started healing, so like I started getting back in the gym a little bit, and my body started coming around. And then we decided to do Olympia like 10 or 11 weeks out, so I rushed to prep. And you know, I got my shit together during the prep to, to prepare for Olympia, but like 10 or 11 weeks to prepare coming off a of pec tear after partying. 
that whole time. You know, it just wasn't enough time to, to make the improvements I needed to compete with the guys on that stage that year. That's when I ended up losing my title. Honestly, that during that time, my, my faith, it, it wasn't that important to me. It was more of a superficial thing. I would always catch myself going back to church like six weeks out from Olympia when I really needed God's help. And it was more of just, more of a, a me thing. You know, I wasn't trying to connect with God and Christ. It was more to make myself feel better. And um, that's the farthest thing that you want to do when you're trying to develop a relationship with Christ. And especially if you want to, His help is make it all about yourself. And at that point in time in my life, everything was about Jeremy Buendia. When Jeremy lost in uh, 2018 and took a fourth, the way I felt about that is that um, uh, we weren't getting along at the time. In fact, I didn't go to that Olympia because of uh, just some of the things that were going on in his life and I wasn't agreeing with it. And I'm his father, so I, you know, I had to make a stand. I hated every moment of it. They saw me, my life unraveling in 2018 leading up, the way I was acting, the partying, my lifestyle, you know, the numerous girls I was dating in and out. I brought like four different girls over to my parents' house to meet them that year. Like, that's just embarrassing. You know, I couldn't have a conversation with either my mom or dad or my brother without getting in an argument. You know, like I said, I, I was so full of myself that I thought I was better than everybody, including my family at one point. I've always been a saver, and um, I like watching that money grow. I'm, I'm not one for going out and buying things, just things, and that's what he was doing. We kept reinforcing that he's still young enough and he can do, he can do it all over again young enough to make those mistakes and, and start all over and, and he could still build. I was so wrapped up in myself and thinking like I was bigger than everybody and everything that I was untouchable that, you know, I didn't even realize things were unraveling for me until things are already like have crumbled and broken down. You know, there's a lot of things that I overlooked and I'm not here to point fingers or anybody or blame anybody because I take responsibility for everything that's happened to me. You know, even in regards to the people that did screw me over, like it was my own fault for even entering a relationship with somebody like that or trusting somebody like that and being blind to all the red flags that popped up. I blame myself. I should have been smarter. You are who you surround yourself with and when you surround yourself with people that you know are doing shit wrong or the image is gonna wear off on you and you know, you're gonna gravitate towards the things that those people are doing and that's what I did. As much as I hate saying it, I, I, I was a follower. I followed people for a long time. I tried fitting in, tried doing what they did. And that's where like, I feel like I went wrong because I tried so hard being somebody else. I had to be something that everybody else wanted me to be in my own mind. It was obvious to everybody that it wasn't authentic. And I think that's where, I went. That's where people started not liking me because it was just like, I became somebody that I wasn't and it's just kind of like you can tell when somebody's trying and I was trying really hard. It was like the Conor McGregor era. Like I was a huge Conor McGregor fan. We watched him come from the bottom all to the top and he did it in a way that he did it in the Conor McGregor way. I looked up to that guy and you know I saw it work for him so I tried replicating that in my own way and I've been called the Conor McGregor bodybuilding several times. Unfortunately, that's not my true self and I was faking that so it ended up crumbling for me. I would like to take the time to apologize to absolutely nobody. That was the mentality. You know, that was, <laughs> that was the Conor McGregor mentality and I tried, tried being that and <laughs> it fucking backfired. Backfired hard. I think about eight months now. So we started our warehouse about 10 minutes down the road. We moved here eight months ago and now the inventory back stopped. And so, I mean, I had my clothing company. I, was, I had several sponsors. I was still doing social media during that time. You know, I had an online coaching business. I was still relevant enough on social media from, you know, my past wins to be a social media influencer. That's pretty much what I was trying to do. I had big plans for my clothing company, but unfortunately that unraveled and, you know, fell apart and I had invested a lot into that. So that was a big hit when that went under. You know, not only that, it was, you know, obviously everybody's, no, I wouldn't say everybody, but my new followers probably don't know, but you know, I had a lot, a lot of bad relationships with ex-girlfriends that 
you know, were publicized. And it's really hard to have relationships with girls with uh, with huge social media followings because the relationships were very superficial in a lot of ways because it was a, an IG public relationship. So when you have everybody involved in your business all the time, it can make the relationship very difficult. I wasn't the best man that I can be. And, and then rumors started spreading, like I had been in jail and all this other stuff. And I have put women in the hospital and all these other things. And it just, this whole thing blew up and story after story started coming out. And there were stories that were fabricated and it, it, it just made things really, really difficult. And you know, honestly, it did check me in a lot of ways. I had to learn from those mistakes because I was humiliated. I was very angry about it for a long time. But at the same time, like I also, it really made me more conscientious of how I talk to people and how I treat people. And honestly, I, I probably deserved it in a lot of ways. Everything came crumbling down. There was like an army of a few people that were close to me before that turned on me. And they all came together. And what's funny is a lot of those people didn't like each other when I was friends with them. They were like enemies within each other. And then they came together as a group afterwards and tried to tear me down. And they would send people out. They had big social media followings and they'd literally send their followers to all my sponsors page and they just destroy my sponsors in the comments. So I ended up losing several sponsors and majority of my income. I was left with just my coaching business, which you know is what got me through. You know, I had a lot of money saved up, but after that, you know, it started to fall into a really dark spot because I hadn't had, you know, I'd worked so hard all of my 20s to build this huge social media following and to win those four titles. And then less than a year later, my whole reputation gets trashed and everything I worked so hard for was taken away from me. And, you know, I felt like everything I had built has, had lost all of its value. I felt like I had lost all of my value. It was just really tough. I just started, you know, it was, I just started seeing things slip away one by one. We started dating again in early 2019. We had a lot of fun. We were very spontaneous. We would go out all the time. We would celebrate. We, you know, go on adventures. We were very much living in the moment, I think was kind of more so where his focus was at. He had got his success. He had got his titles and then he retired. And then he had a freedom that he hadn't had in a long time. Bodybuilding is so, confining. It is so meticulous. You are on a schedule day in, day out by everything you eat, everything you do, the social interactions you have. And plus he was doing it on a level that most people don't get to experience. So not only did he choose a sport that is super isolating and super strict, he did it at the highest level possible four times over. I think he competed in the Olympia, what, six times so far? So he had already been at that level for six years in a row. It was essentially a decade of his life that he committed to strict living. So I think at the time that I had come back into his life for whatever number of times that is, he was just ready to enjoy himself and I think just feel the freedom of not having a goal and just be present in what he was doing and not be confined by the restrictions of prep. So it was very, what do you want to do today? I don't know, what do you want to do? Let's do this. It was very like pinky in the brain. We did whatever we wanted because we had no really restrictions. Stacy and I started dating in March, March 23rd, 2019. You know, that's still when things were going well for me financially. And that was like kind of the beginning of things to start unravel. We were planning on you know, getting married and having a baby. So that all came later on when we first started dating. We were just trying to have a good time. Went out, we drank a lot, we went to the club, we went to the bars, go out to dinner every single night. You know, I had the Lambo, so we were just cruising around, living this high life. And, you know, I was just trying to ball out for my girl the whole time. And, you know, then all this stuff started happening to me and, you know, like she stuck around, you know, even through when things started to really get ugly for me. I've known Stacey forever since I was eight years old. Like, I've, we have a lot of history. You know, I, when that thing started to fall apart, I realized that she was going to stick with me through it. Like, that was like a really big deal. I just knew that it wasn't going to be the end for him. I knew that it was just 
Sometimes in life you have to go through things that you hate or that you don't want to do or that are awful in order to get to the things that you truly want. So I stood by him because I loved him and I saw who he was at his core. Here's guys. Here. Whoops, party foul already. You guys are all gonna hate me for saying this, and that's fine, because you guys already fucking hate me. I don't care. I, at that time, I was so angry and so full of hate, I didn't even want to feel God or seek God or know God. I was just so angry at that point in time in my life. Like, I felt like the devil just said, a full hold of me like I couldn't escape it you know and that's when we went into COVID and right shortly after all that happened you know and that time was scary for all of us we didn't really know what was going to happen and COVID hit and that's when the real partying started <laughs> Rent was like, again, like 5,500 a month there. And keep in mind, like I hadn't had any sponsors. Like I just had money in the bank and my coaching business, which was enough to get by at the time. And then COVID hit and we're in this big old house with a huge rent. I have three cars still. I have like $23,000 a month in just expenses, probably like 10 grand coming in from my coaching business a month. And then COVID hits and then all of a sudden the gyms close and everybody starts freaking out starts paying for coaching and then all my and again I had no sponsors so it's like then I had no income we went into that lockdown and you know I just started realizing that the money in the bank wasn't gonna last very much longer with that huge expense so like you know we started getting rid of some things I got rid of the Lambo At that time I was like fuck it you know <laughs> I'm just gonna have fun at this point. I don't know what's gonna happen. At that point, everybody thought the world was gonna end because of COVID. And I was like, let's just fucking party, you guys. Stacy didn't. Stacy actually went and got a job during that time to help a little bit. And I really appreciated that. But me and Walker, we stayed at home and uh, we drank and partied during, for like a good like two months. And you know, it just got really dark for me during that time. Like I, I got super depressed and you know, we were drinking and smoking weed and then, and I'm like, man, we're really bored. Let's get some mushrooms. The next thing you know, we're like, hey, let's try some acid. You know, we were messing around with that stuff for a few weeks and like, I started getting like some really dark points in my life, you know, coming, you know, doing that stuff and then going through the coming down off of it. Like, you don't feel good. You start thinking really wrong. And then I started wanting to have a spiritual awakening, a spiritual experience. I needed, I needed some big change in my life. I tried DMT. You know, you go, you, I just trip, you know, I took DMT, I just tripping. And it lasted, I don't know how, it felt like hours, but it was only like seven minutes or something. And I just remember like thinking I saw God or thinking I saw some superior being. And then like later on reflecting on it and seeing how dark and deep I got into my depression. Like I just realized that it was like not the way. And like I knew that was, I was just so in such a deep and dark spot. Like I don't. I didn't do that type of stuff. And like, the fact that I was like, playing around with those, those drugs, that wasn't me. Like the devil seriously had like, was just trying to drag me deeper and deeper and deeper. And um, that's what was happening. You know, I was just in a really bad spot. I wasn't working out, I wasn't taking care of myself. And the next thing you know, on Father's Day, I wake up. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, I just took it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was the happiest day, happiest moment of my life. I remember posting the video of she filmed the reaction, and I didn't never thought I'd be a father because the bodybuilding, like I've always wanted to be a dad, but I always didn't think it was ever going to be possible. From bodybuilding, all these just taking steroids, I thought I was sterile. So when it happened, you know, I was like, I was ecstatic. I always wanted to be a father, but then I also realized I was in a 
really bad point in my life. And I also have always been a believer that, you know, a, a child should have two parents that are together. So, you know, I proposed to my wife and we got married later on that year. And I still was in a really bad spot in my life. Like I'm very fortunate and blessed that my wife can saw the potential in me because, you know, at that point, like I wasn't prepared to be a husband or be a father or take care of anybody because I wasn't even taking care of myself. I had herniated discs in my neck and lower back. I've had those since I was 17. They didn't really bother me very much during the beginning of my bodybuilding career, but they started to creep up on me as I got older through terrible technique and form, bad deadlifting, bad squatting, etc. But I think one of the things that really made things terrible was in 2020. I dislocated my elbow and I hurt my neck really bad. And I've never talked about the actual injury. I posted that I dislocated my elbow. I never told anybody really what happened. In 2020, before we moved back to Sacramento, I was considering moving to Texas with my brother. And we went out there, went house shopping, and I put an offer on a home, both my brother and I did, and we went out to celebrate that night. We ended up taking like four or five shots of Don Julio 1942, which is like this one, of the, which I, tequila, especially 1942, they ain't good for me, bro. <laughs> Turns me into a different person, me and him, we were drinking, like we hadn't eaten all day, so we took these shots because we were so pumped about buying these houses that we forgot to eat dinner because we had gotten so drunk from the four shots that we ended up leaving and going to some bar. And I was in like a tank top because like I left the gym or something, or I was dressed like I was going to the gym. We go into a, this this bar and I, we ended up getting asked to leave because of the way we were dressed. And I was mouthing off because I was drunk. And then we walk outside and like, there's this ledge, probably like, I don't know, probably like up to here on me. And I looked at my brother and I was like, I bet you I can jump on that. And he goes, man, you're not athletic anymore. You're a bodybuilder. I was like, oh yeah, watch this. I go, and I was wearing, you know, like the little toms I used to wear. There's no grip on the bottom. I was wearing these little toms. I jump up on this ledge and my feet slip and I went backwards. And I went, I was gonna land on my head, but I braced my arm out to stop me. And I rolled out of it, but I landed on the top of my head right here. And then my elbow went this way and I kind of rolled out of it. I was really drunk, you guys. So like I, like, probably lucky I was drunk because I was like, I rolled out of it like loosely. If I probably wouldn't have been, I would have landed a lot more stiff. But I ended up like getting, dislocating my elbow. I don't know if we want to show the video. Maybe we will. I've never posted it, but fuck it, why not? <laughs> like get up and I'm loud. Kind of like, didn't really feel much at the time. I was kind of in shock. And I look at my brother like, my elbow is dislocated. Pull it. He's like, no. I'm like, pull it. And he yanks it and then like, I don't know if it popped back in. Then we go to the hospital. I end up causing a scene at the hospital and I didn't end up just leaving because I'm in, I was a drunk asshole. And I ended up flying back home the next day and the, the altitude caused my arm to s swell in the plane, the, pr air, the pressure in the cabin. So I get back home and I'm in just excruciating pain. My elbow, was, elbow and wrist were so bad that I didn't even think about my neck. And it wasn't until like literally like six months later after you know things started to heal, all the soft tissue damage in the elbow and and, and wrist, you know, I started training again. I noticed like, my neck was feeling funny, and I could never figure out why my neck was bothering me so much until like rewatched the video and understood. Like I, I landed on my head pretty bad. I re-injured my neck and made it even worse. I got like, my MR, latest MRI got severe damage to my uh, my discs and herniations and spinal and stenosis on the left side of my neck. And that's probably was the main thing that has caused the most issues as of the past few years has been that, that neck injury that I had.
here we are at the end of the 2000, was it 2020? Our lease was up at the, the house and we were still wasn't doing very well financially, just getting by and we we're running, the savings was starting to run a little bit lower and we decided to move back up to Sacramento or Rockland where we're both from because it's a lot cheaper to live here and we would have our parents around and our family around to help with our daughter when she was born. So we, we made the decision to move back up and that's when like things really started to get even worse for me was when we moved back to Rockland. For one, I never wanted to come move back home to this area. I had a lot of bad memories growing up up here and you know, it wasn't always the easiest. To make matters even worse for myself, I, we moved back into the same exact neighborhood that my parents lived in that I grew up in and we lived in the exact same floor plan house that I grew up in. And, you know, like I said, I dealt with a lot growing up as a kid, you know, in the home, in that same floor plan of a house. You know, I, I went through a lot of things. So moving back home and living in that house with my family, it just brought back a lot of like negative emotions and feelings. And I also felt like I didn't, I hadn't gone anywhere because I was literally like 500 feet away from the, the house I grew up in. I just felt like everything that I had tried, everything I had built in my 20s was wasted and I'm right back to the same place that I started. That's when my, my neck went out on me and I was dealing with a bunch of neck pain so I couldn't train at the beginning of that year at all on top of all the mental health issues I was dealing with. And then I broke out in shingles from all the stress. And that was awful. I was out of the gym for, you know, probably four months at least. I got all the way down to like 163 pounds. I hadn't been 163 pounds since like my junior year in high school. Before I even started bodybuilding, like my teenage bodybuilding show, I was like 161 pounds, like 17 on stage. I was little and I felt awful. And I looked at myself in the mirror and saw what I looked like. And, you know, I was the four time Mr. Olympia physique champion. And this is what you are now. I felt like I would never be able to rebuild my body because one, the injuries and two, I didn't believe in myself. I didn't have the work ethic, the discipline. I couldn't stick to a diet. I just didn't have it anymore. I didn't have that mindset that, that I grew up with. You know, my dad would always push me to be the best at everything I did. And every time I stepped foot on a football field, a baseball field, on, on stage, I believed I was the best. And you have to in order to be a champion, in order to be the best, you gotta believe it. If, you don't, if there's any ounce of you that doesn't believe that you're the best, you won't be. That's something that I lost. And I, I felt like I'd never get back again. And it just ate at me. I was like, what the hell? How did this happen? How did I, how did I let this opportunity just disappear? How did I build something so great and fail to build anything off of it. How did I win? How do I go winning four Olympia titles, being one of the most well-known, you know, fitness people in the world, and I have nothing to show for it? It was embarrassing. It was humiliating. Like I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. And when my daughter was born, it was probably one of the the hardest things that that month after because, you know, I had a huge reality check. I had a, this beautiful little girl that is mine that I'm responsible to love and take care of. And I got this beautiful wife that I'm responsible to take care of and love, but I couldn't even take care and love myself. So how was I supposed to do that for them? And it was just, I just remember like how much pain I caused everybody. And through all those tough times, you know, my family and my friends were there for me trying to help me and I didn't want their help. I didn't allow them to help me. I just hurt them more by just taking it out on them. And when you want to help somebody, like you want to help somebody and it hurts when you, that person doesn't allow you to help them. And that's what I was doing to them. So I wasn't just like, I was hurting them like twice. And um, it was really tough because 
I couldn't look myself in the mirror. And I thought, maybe they're better off if I wasn't here. Like, maybe if I wasn't around or if I wasn't alive, I, everybody would be happier because I wouldn't cause any pain. And I've wrestled with that for a few months of like getting up every day, feeling that way. And it was awful, like, to feel that much hurt and anger and sadness and pain that you can't escape from the moment you wake up to the time you fall asleep. I couldn't even escape it in my sleep. Like, I had nightmares every night. I just couldn't get away from it. And that lasted months, you know, months. Like, I had dealt with other situations previously feeling that same way. But once my daughter was here, and the realization that I was just a piece of shit, it haunted me. It haunted me to the point that I didn't have anywhere else to turn. Like, I tried everything else. I tried fixing myself, and it was just to the point where, like, I was at rock bottom and I had nowhere else to turn but to God. And that's what I had to do. And that's ultimately when, you know, things started to slowly get better for me. And he started to reveal to me a lot of things and point me in the direction of how to help myself. And, you know, it took a lot, it took time and it just didn't happen overnight. Like it, it took months and months and months for like these small changes to start developing me to the point where I was able to be functional again. It was a process, man. It like, shit had to get really bad for me in order for me to like finally snap out of it. And it, like I said, I didn't, finally, I didn't even finally snap out of it. But God gave me a, a little bit of strength for me to start moving forward again. And that's when like I started getting up and making a decision like, I gotta start doing stuff. I can't just get up and sit on the couch all day long, pissed off and angry and treating everybody like shit. So I started making some small changes and started trying to get back in the gym every single day. And you know, that helped a little bit for a little while. Shout out to Ike, my buddy Ike. He uh, has been in the sub industry for a long time. And I didn't have anything at that time. Like I, <laughs> I was at a really, really bad point in my life. I'd probably been gotten back in the gym for like three or four weeks. I put a little bit of weight back on. Started posting a little bit more on social media. And I got a message from my buddy Ike. And he's like, hey, there's a company, new company out of the Middle East that is looking for an athlete. And I brought up your name. He was, are you, how, are you, how are you doing? I was like, man, I can really use some financial help right now. Anything would help. Yava Labs actually ended up signing me. They, they took a leap of faith at me and they, they gave me a, actually a very, very, very generous contract at that time. I was not worth the amount of money that they were paying me. That little bit of help, that little bit of belief in me at that time gave me the, the realization of this is what I do for, this is what I gotta do to provide for my family. I gotta get my ass back in the gym at least to make money because that's what they're paying me for. I gotta market their products, I gotta get back in the gym. And that was the probably the the first sign of light that I had gotten was that sponsorship from Yaba Labs. You know, that was enough money to make sure I would be able to pay for my house, the rent. It took a little bit of stress off me. You know, I started getting back after. I started doing a little more content and working hard and then um, I reached out to VQ about six weeks later as I build up a little more confidence in my physique. And I told them that, you know, I'm coming back. I don't want to rebuild myself. You know, I have a big uphill battle and I need some support. And I plan on returning to Olympia stage. DQ, I was with them in 2017 and 18, and they were a huge part of my career. And, you know, I helped get VQ off the ground. I was their very first sponsored athlete, and I've always had a great relationship with them. So the fact that they signed me and gave me a very uh, generous contract as well was a huge blessing. I remember when they signed me, I was so thankful. And like, it was enough money for me to like be okay. And I was like, okay, now I'm starting to see a little bit of light that I can do this again. People are believing in me. So I started pushing forward, you know, through 2021. And, you know, I started training and building my physique back up. And I'm talking about building it up from ground zero. You know? You know, I started getting back into things, you know, all my neck would start, my neck would flare up on me and, you know, it would, it would put me out. I couldn't even press like 
30 pounds on, on chest press. I couldn't press anything overhead. And like, I had just started getting my physique back. So that put, put me out and I started slipping back into depression again because I wasn't able to do what I needed to do for work, which was train and look good. And that sent me spiraling again into, you know, a deeper depression. That happened several times, you know, until I started getting, and then I started getting epidural injections in my neck, which give me temporary relief every, you know, four to six months, I had to get a new one. So that was, that was what I experienced in 2021. My contract expired with Yava Labs May of 2022. I had told everybody I was going to plan on coming back to Olympia. You know, I had been consistent with my content again, and I asked for more money on my new contract. And at that point in time, they weren't ready to pay me more. So I ended up signing with another company from India. That's when, you know, things kind of started to unravel again. You know, the relationship with the company in India went sour for several reasons. Um, not on my behalf, it was just, very, very difficult to do business with that particular company. When I walked away from that company, that was a large part of my income. I gave that up because I wasn't willing to be part of that brand anymore. What's up, YouTube? Today is October 10th. As promised, I was gonna take you guys to meet my coach, and we are moments away from doing that. We're here in Denver, Colorado, and my coach for Olympia next year is Alan Watkins, AKA Waddy Watkins. So in October 2022, before Joven came out, I had to get myself back in pretty decent shape. I remember going out there to see Wadi, to train with him and to hang out with him for a little bit. It was like right after my birthday. And I remember going out there and talking to Wadi about competing again next year and having Dylan Armbrust, who's the owner of Armbrust Gym and who's also an IFBB official judge. I had them look me over and you know, at that time, you know, Wadi was like, yeah, you know, I think we've, we've put in the right work and you're consistent that we can get back on that stage. There was no thought at that time of me ever being, of me winning in 2023. Going out there, that's kind of what kickstarted it. And then going out to Olympia. You know, I was still coaching Joven at the time, you know, I was getting him ready for his very first Olympia. He came out and stayed with me the last three and a half weeks of his prep. <laughs> uh, it's good to see you, man. You ready to do this? You ready? <laughs> Let's roll. And that was something I really wanted to do for him. Joven and I have been close ever since his amateur days in 2017 when I started coaching him. You know, so that was a really big, exciting moment. And honestly, it helped distract me from a lot of my own personal issues at the time. Joven helped motivate me a lot to, you know, I was training with him every day. That was probably the first time I had been consistent on my training, like a professional bodybuilder. In a long time, I was back on eating my diet with him for those three weeks. And I started seeing some good changes in my physique during those three weeks he was there. And then we ended up going to, you know, I went with him to Olympia. And at that time, I was very much considering coming back and competing at the 2023 Olympia after having Joven there. You know, I realized that, you know, I, with some more work in my off season, I could be competitive with the guys like Joven and the top guys in the world. So I went to Olympia to experience that first one with him and, you know, reconnect with a lot of people in the industry. I've been away and it was pretty nerve wracking to go to Olympia. Uh, with him just because it was be the first time that anyone's really seen my face since everything had fallen apart. But overall, it was a, a lot better experience going to Olympia than I had thought. The people that matter in the industry, they were all very happy to see me back and gave me some encouraging words. But it also gave me a lot of insight to how much the division evolved. And I remember stepping backstage at pre-judging and seeing the guys getting pumped up and I was like, this is a lot different than what I competed. Seeing Joven, Joven looked so good going into that Olympia. Like he looked far better than I did at that time. And then Joven took like a top, like I think like 20, 19th or 20, 21, 21st place out of like 68 guys. And I'm like, damn, if Joven's placing like that, I would I even be in the top 30 or 40? <laughs> so it was like, I realized that there was so much work ahead of me to go into the next Olympia. But it was, at that time, it was something that I, I, I was really thinking about taking on. And um, after Joven left, my uh, 
neck and my back went out on me again. And all that work I put in that past month, you know, putting my, getting my physique back up to like 200 plus pounds started to fall apart again on me. And, you know, this has been like the third or fourth time that year that my neck had went out on me and I had to take a good amount of time off. And I started getting, started feeling that depression set in once again when I couldn't go back to the gym, realizing that this is what I chose for my career. This is what I chose to provide for my family. And I'm not able to do it. How am I going to be able to compete against the best guys in the world when I'm getting hurt all the time and I got to take three or four weeks off? Or how am I going to compete with those guys? I just saw it firsthand how great they are. How am I going to be able to, to do it? So the end of 2022, I wasn't training. It was a really rough time during the holidays and you know I, I slipped back into a really dark and deep depression again. I'd build up some momentum and then I'd crash. I'd build up some momentum and then I'd crash. You know, and at this time still, I still didn't have my relationship back with God. And I still wasn't walking the way He wanted me to walk. I wasn't following the direction that He wanted me to follow. I wasn't living my life the way He wanted me to live my life. I was living my life the way I wanted to live it. I was living it on my terms to what can appease me and make me happy. That's was the direction I was going and that's why I feel like everything kept failing because I was drawing my motives from the places that I didn't need to. I wasn't taking, I wasn't living the way that God wants me to live and I feel that's why I kept falling back because I wasn't ready yet. You know, there, he, there's been lessons this whole time that he's been trying to teach me and it wasn't until, you know, this prep that I really started to gra get a hold of those lessons and grasp a hold of them. Like my thinking finally has opened up and. You know, I'm starting to see the bigger picture and the understanding of why everything happened to me. You know, it took that long. It took, it took up until this prep for me to have these realizations. It took this long for me to let go of so much pain, hate, anger, sadness, fear, embarrassment. I lived with that since 2019. And that's something I deal with on a daily basis is these just nagging pains and injuries and tightness and stiffness. Like getting up in the morning, it takes me like an hour to get, get loosened up and feel good. I wake up in pain, wake up really tight. When this happens and this my lower back flares up, it, it usually takes me out for like three or four days and it usually ruins my week. 2023, the beginning of it, I had fallen back. You know, I remember calling my dad and it's like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Like, I, I can't, I'm injured. I, I can't body build. I can't compete against these guys. What am I gonna do with my life? I spent all of my 20s invested in building this career around fitness and bodybuilding. Now what? I, I was just angry at myself. I should have stayed in college. I kept telling myself I could have been a doctor. I could have done this. I could have done anything I wanted in my life. I was a very good student. I went to UC Davis my first year. You know, I studied biology. Like. I had a lot of potential to do whatever I wanted to do. And at that point, I was just, I had so many regrets. I'm like, maybe I made the wrong decision becoming a bodybuilder. Maybe like this was the biggest waste of time. Maybe I just wasted all of my 20s. Now I got to start over. I remember telling my dad that, you know, maybe I should take up fighting because I don't have any other skills. You know, maybe I can just get lucky and be one of those fighters that blossom in their mid-30s. I was running out of options. I was told my wife that I was thinking about cleaning up my life completely and becoming a cop. You know, at least they make a good salary, they have a pension, we'll be able, I'll be able to provide for you guys. I didn't know what the hell I was gonna do. I was talking about going back to college. This is all the beginning of this year, you guys. This, is, this was like nine months ago, 10 months ago. I didn't know what I was gonna do. And, yeah, holy crap. That wasn't that long ago. I was just defeated at that point, once again. Not utilizing the strength that God has for us, turning my back to him completely, once again, and allowing the enemy to bury me and keep me there. That's when I realized that I needed to fix this, that I'm getting too old now to keep falling back. I don't have any more time to waste. Like My family needs me to be the man that I need to be. My daughter needs me to be the father that she deserves. 
My wife deserves a husband that is strong, that can be the anchor of the household, that she can rely on, both mentally, physically, spiritually, everything. Like, I gotta be that man. That's when I decided, you know, I, I needed to find some help outside of what I was already doing. So that's when I, um, I started seeing a counselor and doing some talk therapy. And that's when I really started to humble myself before the Lord and recommit my life to Him. And was fortunate enough to have a, a Christian counselor who understood, my, understood that faith was important to me. And that was understanding that was something I wanted to rebuild. So she helped me along with that as well with scripture, but she also gave me a lot of skills and tips and things to help me with my behavior and how I react to my emotions and stuff. And it was just good to be able to vent to somebody that was unbiased, that didn't really know me and that was understanding. And you know, I tried counseling before and it just never worked out because I never found a counselor that I liked. But it was also the fact that I would go to those counseling sessions not ready to fix myself. Like I had already gone in there with a bad attitude. I would already go in there you know, dismissing whatever they say. I go in there not being receptive and not that if you don't want to help yourself, then nobody else is going to be able to help you. So that was what was different this time around was like, I wanted, I wanted to fix me this time. Like I knew that this was the time that I, like, I can't do this anymore. I can't live like this anymore. I can't be miserable anymore. I was sick of it. I was tired of, I was physically tired of waking up and being angry and sad and depressed and hating myself. I was sick and tired of seeing my wife hurting because of how miserable I was. I was I was tired of seeing what I was doing to my parents. I was tired I was tired of it. It took time. It's not like it was just like instant with the counseling. It wasn't just instant with my relationship with God. Like it really took it takes effort. Like you aren't gonna fix anything doing it like once a week. Like you aren't gonna get spiritually strong if you only go to church on Sundays. Like you aren't gonna get strong if, in the gym if you only go on Sunday. Like it's gotta be something that you do every single day. You gotta, you gotta, if you want to better your life, you gotta actively work on it every single day. If you want a better relationship with God, you gotta actively work on it every single day. You gotta stay connected. You gotta hold yourself accountable. You know, and that was the biggest thing is the accountability. I didn't hold myself accountable to shit before. When I started to open up and, and see the flaws in myself and want to fix those flaws, and I, want to, and I started to seek Jesus and his help and his strength, gradual changes started to happen within me. Like I started to feel more motivated. I stopped feeling so depressed. I stopped feeling so guilty. I stopped feeling so sad. You know, I started to feel happiness once again. I started to feel motivation once again. You know, like it just, things started to, started to climb. The more faith I kept in what God was doing for me and the stronger, the more consistent I stayed with my counseling, I just kept taking one step after another. You know, and it wasn't easy. There were so many times where I was, I would wake up and just like not want to do it, but like I knew I couldn't take any steps backwards because if I did, I'd end up where I was before. And so that was just my mentality getting started. You know, and that was when I started to feel like I needed something to focus on in order for me to bring out the best of me again. And that's when I decided to take on Olympia in 2023. I needed a goal. I needed something to challenge me. I needed something to, I needed to overcome something that I feared. And I feared a lot going back to Olympia. I didn't want to embarrass myself. I didn't want to not belong. I didn't want people to think that my four Olympia titles didn't mean anything because my physique wasn't anything compared to the guys nowadays. Like, there's a lot of anxiety that, that led up. There's a lot of things that scared me about coming back. And I wanted to overcome all those things because I had been gotten so good at quitting. I had gotten so good at, at giving up. I had gotten so good at dismissing everything that I needed to change that. What's up you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's been a few months since I've been on here. If you guys haven't already seen on Instagram and some other YouTube channels, I have officially announced my return to Olympia stage here in 2023. If all goes as planned, you guys will see me on stage competing with the best in the world again, trying to get my title back. So we are about five and a half months out from Olympia. I remember when I, when I decided to do Olympia before I announced. I couldn't stick to it, I didn't have the discipline, I didn't, 
I couldn't get up early in the mornings. I couldn't do it. I wasn't there. I wasn't ready at all. But I felt called to do it. I knew that this is something that I needed, that God wanted me to do in order to help me figure out my purpose and my direction and my plan in life. I prayed about it a lot and I remember the day that I decided I was going to do it, I prayed to God and I told Him, I cannot do this alone. Like, if this is something you want me to do, then I will do it but I need your help. I need you to help me. With my, at this point, I couldn't eat. I didn't have an appetite at this time. I remember I couldn't get any meals down. The side of chicken or clean food just make me want to vomit. I remember praying, I was like, God, you got to give me the, 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 the desire to eat. You got to be able to help me get this food down. You got to keep me strong. You got to keep me healthy throughout this prep. You know, I know it's going to be painful. I know I'm going to deal with injuries, but you got to give me the strength. If you're not going to heal my injuries, Lord, then at least give me the strength to push through. If I'm not meant to do this Olympia, then, give, then just tell me, do, allow something to happen that is clear enough for me to understand this is not the direction you want me to go. Whether that's an injury or something happening, just, just give me a clear understanding. And I prayed about that and I asked for a strength and I moved forward, you know, and I started my prep and I announced when I signed with Swiss Nutrition in April that I was going to be returning to Olympia publicly. That was the first time I announced it. And I think that was like April 18th. I knew this was going to be tough. I started at the very bottom of the mountain. I just remember just looking up and just seeing how steep the climb was from where I was at. Not just physically, but mentally. I wasn't ready, but I had to move forward. I really got to elevate my game even more. There's no slowing down. It's, it's pedal to the metal the next five months. If I want to win again, and I want to be the best, I got to be preparing like the best. I got to be preparing better than everybody. My goals are always to win Olympia. Whenever, whenever I do, my goal is to win. But there were a lot of other things that I was trying to accomplish through this prep. Rebuilding myself for one, establishing my confidence again, establishing self-discipline, controlling my emotions, rebuilding my reputation, allowing people to see the changes that I've made. I wanted to not be hated anymore. I wanted people to, I wanted to build a trust back with my, with my fan base for them to love and support me again. Those were probably some of the biggest things that I was trying to accomplish this prep. You know, I feel like this whole prep has just been a long list of tests that God's thrown at me for me to demonstrate the changes that I have made in my life. To be honest, you guys, today's one of those days where I just feel like I feel like shit. My body doesn't feel good. I look terrible today. I honestly didn't want to work, shoot a video today because I wasn't feeling good, but I wanted you guys to see the the bad days too, because they all happen to all of us. And they fucking suck. But I'm still in here pushing through, even though I don't want to be. And I'm so blessed because throughout this prep, I, he has revealed so much to me about who I am, what I've gone through, what I've experienced. And he's changed my whole perception on how I saw those things and how I see myself. And he's just have, has bright, breathed a whole new life into me where it's hard for me to recognize the person that I was before. And it, 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 it's just, it's, it's amazing to not only for others to see the changes, but for like me to see the difference. And that just goes down to just the way I think now, what I value, and how much closer I've gotten to the Lord throughout this process. Like throughout this prep, I've, I've stayed so connected to Him. I've kept Him a part of every moment of it. You know, it's not just I pray, I go to church on Sundays, or I pray before a meal, or I pray at night. Like I surrounded myself with Christ this prep. You know, my playlist in my car is, Christian music. I listen to Christian music when I'm working out. You know, I, I check in with God throughout the day. Like he, whenever I feel a certain way, or if I'm feeling angry, feeling anything, like I go to him and it's crazy because it's sound, like, I remember this would all sound so dumb to me a few years ago when I wasn't following God and I wasn't walking with him. But now that I am, it's dumb to me that I wasn't walking with him before because of how much he's lifted me up in every aspect of my life. I'm so much better, such so happier when he is with me. You know, when I start my day with 
Christ, and I, you know, I go to the gym every morning, do my cardio, and I, I watch Stephen Furtick. He's a pastor out in South Carolina. He has a big YouTube channel, and I've been watching his stuff. His preaching has done a lot for me, and it's crazy because I'll be feel I'd be feeling a certain type of way going into the gym on certain days, and I'd open up the YouTube, and like his video would be like the topic would be something that I'm feeling at that moment. I'm like, seriously, like. I was literally just like complaining about this to myself and then now God, you're gonna put this video right before me. And I'd open it and dude, that happens so much. You're not gonna talk to God, like have a, a conversation like I'm having with you guys. You're not gonna hear the audible God talking to you. God works through people and things and situations and you gotta be able to receive those things and understand them. And, you know, like he's he's done that this whole time. He's blessed me with certain situations and he's blessed me with people around me. He's blessed me with the videos I watch in the morning and the devotionals, even like going to church on Sundays, like it's always the right he's just been he's been there to help me this whole time. I think that's one of the biggest things that he want why he wanted me to go through this prep, because it was gonna be so challenging and it wasn't something I was gonna do on my on my own. And he knew he could reveal himself to me through this prep and to really show his strength and his and his grace through everything that I'm going through. And like, he got me through this. There were so many times during this prep that I felt like giving up because I didn't feel healthy enough or I didn't feel worthy or I didn't feel good enough. I'm not gonna be able to fucking do this, bro. How the fuck am I gonna compete for, compete for Olympia like this? And he just kept pushing forward, he kept me pushing forward. And we're done. Ah! Here we go. Stretch it out, nice and smooth. One, two. It's so fucking frustrating, you guys. You have no idea. All I want to do is train hard. It's every fucking day I got to come in here and work around this shit. I'd say like one out of every like six or seven workouts is good. There's this more of the surface things like just testing my disciplines in regards to you know the diet and everything and training and overcoming the, in, the the injuries but then there's like the deeper things too like being away from my wife for an extended period of prep a test of my controlling my emotions like yeah i had my highs and lows this prep but you know i i did it wasn't like i was I didn't get angry or anything but it was a, a matter of being able to control my emotions and my anger and not blowing up and reacting in a, like the ways that I used to. And I feel like I was presented a lot of tests throughout this whole prep of learning to control my emotions and, and not overreact or not blow up. Not only that, but it's just like the ultimate test of tr controlling my emotions. I'm, you're gonna be on low food, be starving. Your body's gonna be miserably in pain. And on top of that, you're gonna be on steroids, which make you a freaking asshole just being on them. Are you strong enough, Jeremy, to handle all of that? I'm not saying God told me to be on steroids, that's not what I'm saying, but it was just, it's part of what I have to do in order to do what needs to be done. Like, I know that's something that people are gonna say in this video, God doesn't want you to do steroids. No, he doesn't want me doing steroids, but sometimes you gotta put yourself in a situation in order to reach a certain audience or do something to fulfill the plan that is destined for you. And I feel that God's using bodybuilding as a vessel for me to get my story across. I mean, look what I'm doing right now. You know, like if I didn't go through Olympia, this whole process, I wouldn't be making this video right now. So there is a purpose behind what I've done. And regardless of being on steroids or not, like it was a test and a challenge. And like everything was thrown at me to see if I can blow up, to see if I would react like I used to. I passed all those tests. I didn't, I didn't. I controlled myself this whole prep. And I feel like that says a lot because if I was gonna blow up like I used to, it would have happened being on prep, being on steroids, you know, it, it, it would have happened. And I feel like I have gained that self-control over my emotions that show the way I've matured over the last few years compared to the way I used to be. You're not happy today? You mentally or your muscles? My muscles don't feel Oh good. yeah. Shoulders fucked right now. Yeah, you just got pushed through it today. I don't think I had any good workouts this week. Yeah. But you got them done and you got through them. So that's half the battle.
being with Wadi, my majority of my prep was was very beneficial. Like me and Wadi go way back, and Wadi's always been somebody that I've respected and trusted. He's always been somebody that's been good to me. And when I picked a coach this year, I needed somebody that was going to be able to be there for me emotionally. <laughs> Wadi was always somebody that checked up on me throughout my rough times. Like we didn't talk a whole lot, but when I would go through some stuff, like and he'd call me, you know, he was somebody that. I can lean on for advice, somebody I can talk to or vent to, and somebody I would, I can trust not to, you know, air my dirty laundry out to anybody else. So I, I have a lot of respect and love and trust for Wadi, and I knew that if I was going to do a prep, I was going to need somebody that was going to be able to support me emotionally. He did that, and that's what I needed. He kept me strong throughout this prep. I owe a lot to him for taking me on because you know I'm not an easy client. You know, I, I I'm very set in a lot of my ways with prep and the way I train and the way I diet. So, you know, we went back and forth a lot on, on a lot of things. And he had a lot of patience with me and a lot of understanding. I told him at one point, like, I apologized because I was like, I wouldn't want to train, I wouldn't want to coach me. You know, because I, there was, I did question a lot of things because it's a lot different than what I, what I was used to in, in, in certain things. And I'm just grateful that we were able to do this together because we did accomplish a lot this prep. We may not have showed up the way we wanted on stage and got the placing that we wanted, but you know, at the same time, I know we're gonna get a lot better. I know that he's the guy to help me get to where I need to be. It took a, dude, it took a long time for me to start believing myself again. This whole prep, you know, I doubted myself. I didn't think I was good enough. And it wasn't until like four or five weeks out when my body started taking a turn where I really started to see my physique come back to life that was going to be competitive. You know, this whole time people have been telling me I was too small. The division had evolved. And, you know, that really messed with my head. Something I had to keep pushing past and keep working through was all the doubt. It's not easy. I mean, we doubt ourselves a lot of the time, but it's like, are you going to succumb to that doubt and you're going to back down and cower away from it? You know, face that doubt head on and, and prove it wrong. That's why I chose to do this whole prep, even though I didn't see what I wanted to see in the mirror, even though I had some doubt in my mind, I kept pushing forward because I wasn't going to go backwards. You know, when that five week marker hit, I started to see my body come back to life and I really started to believe in myself again. And that's when things really started to take change, when my belief started to come in. That's when my body really started to come back and people started to believe in me. You know, I went from people saying that I didn't belong to people saying that I wasn't gonna place in the top 20 to people saying I was gonna be placing in the top 10. And then people said maybe top five. And then at, towards the end of prep, people were like, damn, Jeremy might win this. So it was, <laughs> it was just a process of staying consistent and believing in myself and not allowing others to belittle me or make me believe I wasn't good enough. And they did that for a long time and it was, I was tired of it. That's one thing you know, I want people to take away from this whole thing is have belief in yourself. If you don't have belief in yourself, you're not going to have any, you're not going to have anything. You're not going to be able to achieve the things you want to believe because you've already defeated yourself before you started. Belief in yourself is the biggest thing, the biggest asset you can have to being successful. Without it, you can guarantee your failure. Physically, I've been dealing with injuries, but also the mental aspect of things of dealing with my mental health and trying to be a better person. And um, not only, <laughs> like I said, the in, I felt like the industry didn't want me for so long. I felt like everybody hated me in the industry. I felt like everybody in the world hated me for so long. I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, the past several years, people weren't cheering for Jeremy Buendia, they hated Jeremy Buendia. So to be able to get on that stage and see the support that I had, it, it just it shows the complete 180 of where I was not too long ago. And it reminded me of why I worked so hard to do this, why I battled through all those tough times, why God wanted me to do this. So he can reveal to me my value to this world, that I am wanted, that I am needed, that there is a plan for me, there is a purpose for me. Like God, that when that happened, I realized that God isn't done with me. And there's so much more. And it was kind of just like a sense of like relief in a certain way because I started to see why I had I worked so hard to get back to where I was at.
I had a long list of goals that I wanted to accomplish this prep, and the last one on the list was winning the 2023 Mr. Olympia. I feel like that was the final test for me. There was a song I listened to all prep called Even If. I think the band is called Mercy Me. It's a Christian song talking about even if God doesn't do the things that we want or even if things don't work out in our way that we, that we want, that God is still in control and there's still, there's still good in every situation. Like There's still glory. Even if I don't win, there's still glory and there's still a reason, there's still a purpose. So that's kind of what I grasped onto after I realized I wasn't gonna be winning the Olympia this year was like, even though I didn't win, there's still so much good that has come out of this Olympia prep. And that's what's given me so much peace and joy and happiness despite not placing the way I wanted to place is because I know how much I've gained and how much I've won from this prep already. This was a final test of how I was gonna respond. How much do I trust in God's plan for me? How strong is my faith in God's plan for me? If I didn't believe that God had something greater for me, I would have let this loss destroy me and I would have turned my back on God and be like, dude, you let me down. He didn't let me down. No, because the journey isn't over. Like, I gotta be patient because God has something greater for me. An Olympia win would be amazing, but I know God's got something bigger in store for me. Whether that's an Olympia win next year, which again, I feel it's gonna be valid everything I can do with that. It's going to be the journey. How many lives am I going to be able to impact? How many people am I going to be able to inspire? How many people am I going to be able to bring to the Lord along my journey? Like, those are the real victories that I now see that are greater than just a gold medal. The gold medal is amazing. I want that gold medal. If God wants me to have that gold medal again, He'll, be, he'll make sure that happens for me. But also, I know that even if that isn't the plan for me, even though that's what I want, I know that God's plan is far greater than what I can ever plan for myself. And I'm gonna hold on to that. And I'm gonna hold on to my faith because He hasn't led me wrong. He's rebuilt me, He's given me so much. And I know with God, more good is to come. So I'm excited that my journey's not over. <laughs> I know that my journey's not over and I'm excited to see what's to come. I'm excited to see what He has in store for me. I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that I'm, I've been able to evolve and to grow and to be able to share my story with you guys. I know some of you guys can relate. I know there's a handful of people that I'm even close to that are going through tough times right now that I've been trying to help them understand that they can pull themselves out of it. You know, it, it, doesn't, it takes time. It isn't something that's going to happen overnight. It takes effort. You know, I know a lot of people live with guilt and they don't think that they're good enough or they, you know, they see themselves in a certain image and they don't think that they can ever change and that's who they are. And like I want them to see that it's possible because the man that I was in 10 months ago isn't the man I am now. The man I was three or four years ago is a completely different man than I am now. That if you're in a low point in your life, if you do lose everything, if you do hate yourself, you don't have to. Like there's there's a redeemer in Christ. There's there's a way out, there is light at the end of the tunnel. But in order for you to start seeing those changes in your life, in order for you to start making your way to that light, you gotta get yourself up and you gotta start moving. No one else is gonna move those feet for you. You gotta move, you gotta move forward, you gotta get up and you gotta be productive. You gotta fight, even when you don't want to. I remember those first couple of weeks when I was forcing myself to get up every morning, I just, I hated it. I hated it, I just, every, time I get up and go to the gym, I was just pissed off, but like, I just stay consistent with it. And when you stay consistent with something, you start seeing the benefits from it, and you start seeing the, the results from the consistency, and then, then you start realizing, shit, you know, that's, this is what it takes. In order to feel a certain way, in order to feel good, in order to have things, you gotta work for them. Nothing's gonna be handed to you if you're just sitting still. I just wanna, I don't want people with the, to, that were, are feeling the way I felt, you have to stay there because it sucks. It's a shitty way to live. You don't gotta live that way. You know, I lived that way for a couple of years where I just hated everything and didn't care about much and didn't think about my future or the people around me. And it's just miserable. And I know what it's like to feel like you're stuck there. For those of you that are feeling that way, just remember that crooked sticks still draw straight lines. 
So keep that in mind. There's a way to turn things around. There's a way to be better. It just takes a little bit of effort and it takes a little bit of faith. And if you let God into your life, you let Christ into your life, He will elevate you on every level. And He will make your life whole. And He'll give you peace. He'll give you happiness. And <clears throat> He'll give you a purpose. Sometimes parents would get mad at me because I was throwing the ball too hard to my little seven or eight year old son. Mom! And when parents would ask me, why are you doing that? I go, because my son's never going to know how hard your son's going to hit that ball. So he better be ready. When I look at Jeremy and I say Jeremy Buendia, I think of the The man does not quit. I'm proud of you, man. The comeback is here. Come on. We dated in our early 20s before he turned pro. And the just eagerness and the commitment and the love he had for bodybuilding and the excitement for, you know, could I go pro or, or not could. He's never said the word but The coming back to the stage and deciding to compete again, it just brought back his spirit. It just revitalized him. And to see him excited to wake up day to day, to have a schedule, to do what he loves to do, and actually rediscover his passion for it. Yeah, it's just been real exciting watching it, especially the support of all the fans. I just, I love the comments. You're 33 years into the game. Welcome to the 33rd level. God bless you along with your family, and I really hope that you're feeling the love, not, not just from near, but also from afar. I'm very, very happy for you, man. The evolution of Jeremy Lodea continues on. Jeremy, I'm proud of you for everything you've accomplished and everything you've overcome to get back on the stage. You know, there's um, something to say about the work ethic that we have missed. You know, this past year, year and a half on this journey back to Olympia. I love you, Jeremy. You're gonna crush it. And, uh, let's go. Seeing his dedication and his work ethic towards getting to the point where he is now, all I can say is, man, I wish you the best of luck. Let's go. I just want to say, Jeremy, that I'm very proud of you for going for your fifth title this year. It's been very inspiring. I just want to say thank you for showing me what it's like to not give up and follow your goals and dreams. Not only be a great champion and athlete, but also a father and a husband. It's just amazing to watch you hey. grow Come on. as as just amazing man. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you ready? I just want you to know, man, how proud I am of you for how hard you've worked this whole time and how much you've grown, not only in your physiques, but in your personal life as well. You know, I know this wasn't an easy prep by any means, but you trusted the process, you trusted the people around you, 